insane, and you're watching TV. been pigeonholed as a noise rock band and i think i speak for these two yes yes you do when i say that we are extremely proud to be a noise rock band and to have started something that's really cool and there were a lot of other bands like us too that were doing the noise rock thing early on a lot of them kind of have stopped doing stuff when we first started out pete shore was a skateboarder that i met at school because we both skated. And then me and him were hanging out. We heard about a guy who had a gigantic bag of weed. And he also played drums. So we figured, hey, let's go over and see what this guy's about. Maybe he'll smoke us out. We went over there. Turns out Charlie had a drum kit set up in his room. And we had a PA in our room. So we just brought the PA over to his house, or his room. And we started playing and things went really well. It was really easy. We smoked a lot of weed, made a lot of music, good times. The New York hardcore scene? No, it was it was mediocre at best. I'm sorry, but man, I went to the Sunday matinees at CBGB's and it was a bunch of fucking suburban knuckleheads coming into the city. There was only one really good band or maybe like Murphy's Law or Warzone. Wars on, hold on. And Crow Mags. See, these are like the local New York bands. I don't know, I don't think we miss the old days. They're just different days, you know? I think we just managed to roll with whatever changes have been happening. I mean, if some of the old days were great, some of the old days were shitty, you know? Some of the new days are great, some of the new days are shitty, too, for different reasons, but you just got to learn to stay the course and just do what you got to do, you know what I mean? When you're younger, everything is easier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, thought, I personally think that it was a little rougher when I was younger because we were so incredibly distracted by all the other crap going on in our lives and living in a van and not getting hotels and sleeping on people's floor and cat hair and piss and beer and just living a very rough, fucked up lifestyle. And things are more organized now. Like we used to have to do this thing, good cop, bad cop, where Pete was a good cop, I was a bad cop. And when the guy didn't have the money to pay us, Pete would be telling him like, oh, hey, be cool. Chris is really mean, you know, and I'm actually a pretty nice person. But he would tell him that I was really mean and I was going to just beat the shit out of him if he didn't pay us. So inevitably, I would have to be like, hey, man, you better fucking pay us. And then we would drive him into an ATM and he would have to get the money out of his bank account and pay us under threat, you know, of physical violence, which I would say now things are much easier. What? <laughs> No, um, no, it's just really just New York in the 80s, like living in a place where there's violence all the time and drugs everywhere and crazy crap going on all the time in a seriously fucked up city. New York used to be really fucked up. Vinny, Vincent Signorelli, he was in New York in the 70s hanging out going to uh, like Max's Kansas City, right? That's right. That's, that's right. Max's Kansas City. Shit kind of got... It was just fucked up from the 70s and 80s. 90s, it started to get cleaned up. The Giuliani era, Giuliani era uh, really, it was just a clean sweep. You know, the fascist boot of control was brought down. The hammer was brought down on the city. We're busted. Oh, no, it's the cops. It's going down now. <laughs> Is great. We have a really good relationship with pretty much every label, all the way back to Matador. I still stay in touch with Gerard. Um, we have a good relationship with everybody. Even Relapse has offered to distribute Lamb and Limited records if we want to do it. And, and really, what I'm kind of thinking with Lamb and Limited is to possibly reissue vinyl, Unsane vinyl, later and do it through Lamb and Limited and have it distributed. Cutthroats, I don't know. I mean, right now, 
I love playing in this band. This is my main focus. These two guys are my very close friends, and I love them very much. And I hope to keep doing this as much as I possibly can, because I'm getting old. I'm going to die pretty soon. Have a good time all the time. Yeah, everything's pretty much on hiatus. Yeah, every, everything's on hiatus. We got shit to do. We're busy. We're getting a lot of the kings of noise are back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he never claimed to be noise rock whoever's. You know, we're just guys in a band. And th and it's kind of cool that people say that. You know, I, th I think it's very flattering. With this one, I got to work from home a lot, which was really amazing. And really focused, and Dave did too. We all did pretty busy. Um, but basically, me and Dave wrote stuff separately. Sent a little bit. But really just kind of wrote separately and then got together. Um, and worked it out like you know for a couple weeks before we went to the studio. We had like 80 minutes of, of music, and then cut that down to 40. So you know. You know, we did like appeal sessions here and stuff like that. That's just totally awesome. It's amazing. I can't believe we even get to got to do stuff like that. And it's always kind of been like, originally we would fly into London and start here, you know, and it was, this was kind of like sort of a home base away from New York. In fact, maybe even gotten better for us in Europe in certain respects in terms of draws and crowds, etc., and that kind of thing. Um, but our last U.S. tour went very well as well. So I don't know. For me, I don't think there's really a huge, like, disparity between the two it's 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 evened out for us and it's it's good all around you know states and it's gonna be cool to play with sun do you say sun or sun oh sun yeah like the end